apparently, after about 18 years of being here at Down East Thunder Farm, we finally discovered that there are some people that seem to have a hard time trying to find us. We're out in the boonies. Uh, our farm is located in, out in a wooded area, at least the entrance to it. Uh, at the end of a dead end road and it's all uh, it's a gravel road and it's very small very narrow and some people think they're lost when they're not they're actually heading in the right direction and uh, it, our driveway just looks like some you know random woods road you can't see the house or the shop or any of the other structures from the road so people think they turn around they leave and they were here they just didn't know it I guess we need a sign, so I'm finally getting around to making one. So my wife uh, made up the logo in such a way that I could transfer it to the uh, software the CNC machine can interpret and use. And I hope you enjoy the build. Here we go, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, all that good stuff, and thanks for watching. Well, I, I have an interesting find. Although I went through pains to try to remove all nails and fasteners out of all the wood before I milled it and then uh, glued it all together, I found, while sanding, this nail head. I don't know if you can see it, right there. Yep. 
So, when I look at the back side, flip it over. This is it. Let's see if I can point out to you. Right there. So I'll get a little, you know, nail punch and I'll drive that out because when I put this in the CNC machine, I really don't want my my uh, milling bit on the CNC router to hit that. It would not be a good thing. At the speed at which the router travels at, about 15,000 RPM, the uh, that bit hits that, it's going to shatter and spread little bits of shrapnel all over the shop. Not a good thing. Well, I was successful in getting the... Uh, bopping that nail out from the other side with the little nail punch so that the head is raised up enough where I'm going to try to grab it with the claw hammer. I've just got a piece of scrap wood here so I don't dig into it into the wood. I'm trying to do this here. I don't have anybody to hold the camera. So uh, I'm trying to do one thing with one hand, hold the camera with the other. There it is. Yep. There it is, a little brad or tack, but I got it out. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some wood putty and I'm going to fill that hole along with any other imperfections and then I'll come back and do another uh, final sanding before I treat the wood with a pre-stained conditioner and that allows the, uh, the wood to take the stain uh, evenly instead of being splotchy all over the place. I'm going to begin by applying this pre-stained wood conditioner. This is essentially useful when you're going to stain a soft wood such as pine. Pine or spruce or even some maples, birch, that kind of thing. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to place uh, just one coat of this on there. That's all that's needed. And I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes and then I will come back and I'll wipe off any excess. Then I'll let it dry for a few more minutes more and then I can go ahead and apply the stain. So what this is essentially going to do, it's going to allow me to have a nice even coat of stain instead of having a lot of splotchy patches. At least that's uh, how it's supposed to work in theory. Well, and I haven't used this product before, but I've seen it uh, recommended by other YouTube uh, makers. So I figured I would try it, see how it works. It, it, it's kind of the consistency of water, so it goes on very easily. And yeah, just let it soak into the wood. It said let it soak in 5 to 15 minutes according to the instructions. So I'm going to do that and I'll follow those instructions. I'm not going to bother doing this on the back side. This is going to be the side that I carved the sign into. I allowed almost 10 minutes and I have already uh, wiped off any excess pre-stained conditioner and most of it soaked into the wood very little came off into the rag so now I'm going to apply stain and uh, this is also a Minwax product I'm using uh, dark walnut number 2716 mainly because that's what I have I have a few stains in stock this is one of the darker ones and I'm going to use a foam brush to apply it We'll see how that works out. Of 
course it, it goes on this dark now but when I wipe off the excess it won't be anywhere near that dark It'll be a lot lighter I had some darker stain I have uh, some ebony but that would uh, render the sign a little bit darker than I would like I'm going to do a similar thing. I apply this stain. I'm going to let it sit for a while and a few minutes. And then I'll come back out and I'll take a nice clean rag and I'll wipe off the excess. By the way, I'm no expert at doing uh, this type of finish work. I rarely do any finish work. Okay, the stain is the same way as the preconditioner. You allow 5 to 15 minutes for it to soak and you can wipe off. And I'm at almost 10 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and start wiping her down. Okay, that's it for now. Until tomorrow, let that stain dry. Uh, I'll bring it inside for the night and uh, so the moisture doesn't settle on it and I'll start with the polyurethane tomorrow. I'll take a 3M uh, scotch pad and just lightly go over it first before I apply the first coat of polyurethane and I think this is going to come out nice. It's been 24 hours since I applied the stain and I just checked it and it's pretty dry so I'm going to apply the first coat of polyurethane and I'll let that dry for a pretty good while and then I'll come back scuff it up a little and apply another coat and I think I'm going to do three coats total and I'll be back in a little bit I'm not going to ask you to sit through watching me put the polyurethane on <laughs> 